Have you ever been curious about building a powerful computer for AI tasks? Today I'm walking you through how I built my ultimate home lab AI server. But before diving into the specs, let's talk about this machine is actually for. Because understanding the goals really shaped every decision of this build. First off, this isn't a machine learning rig. I want to be crystal clear about this, because it's a common misconception. I'm not planning to train large language models from scratch. That would need far more power than what's reasonable for a home lab setup. Even the smallest state-of-the-art models require massive GPU clusters that would make your electricity meter spin like a disco ball. Sure, maybe some fine-tuning here and there, but full training, a new model, that's not my goal. Instead, this build focuses on two main objectives that I think are far more interesting for home lab environments. First, running multiple AI agents simultaneously. Imagine having AI assistants that can autonomously handle various tasks without constantly loading and unloading models. I'm talking about enhanced web searches that don't just return links, but provide comprehensive answers with fact checking. Smart home automation that adapts to your schedule and streaming habits and personalized content curation that actually understands your preferences. Second, consolidating my existing home lab setup, which currently looks like a small data center with multiple PCs and Raspberry Pis scattered all around. We've all been there, I guess. Having a Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant, a NUC for Kubernetes environments, and another machine for testing failover. Before you know it, you're managing a small army of devices. I want to bring all of these under one roof with a powerful Proxmox server. Okay, before I go over the build, don't feel taken hostage. I included a part list in the description below and added chapter markers, so feel free to jump around. I try to share some thoughts along the way, so I hope staying tuned is beneficial for you. But I totally get it if you're only interested in a tiny portion of it, so just get right to it. Well, I guess nowadays it's also important to point out that neither the video nor the parts I present are sponsored or provided by someone other than me. I paid with my hard-earned money for all of us. Let's start with the brain of the operation. I went with the AMD Ryzen 7 950X and there are several crucial reasons for this choice. First, those 16 cores and 32 threads give me serious computational headroom. But more importantly, unlike Intel's recent offerings, there are no efficiency cores to worry about. While e-cores are great for laptops and general purpose computers, they can cause headaches with Proxmox virtualization, particularly when it comes to CPU pinning and resource allocation. I actually spent a considerable time looking at server-grade CPUs, particularly the EPIC series. The core counts are impressive and the amount of PCI lanes important for peripherals like GPUs is massive. But the price to performance ratio just didn't make a lot of sense for home lab environments. We're talking about three to four times the cost for features we simply wouldn't fully utilize. The 7950X hits that sweet spot of high performance without entering enterprise pricing territory for me. And with the AM5 being AMD's current platform, we've got an upgrade path if needed. Something that's particularly important given how rapidly AI hardware requirements are evolving. For cooling, I chose the Noctua NHD15S in black. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why not an AIO? Trust me, I wrestled with this decision. AOs look sleek and their cooling performance is excellent. But after watching countless noise comparison videos and reading about pump wine, I decided to prioritize silence over aesthetics. The NHD15S delivers exceptional cooling performance with basically zero noise under normal loads. Even under full CPU load, the noise level of the system remained constantly below 25 dBA which is barely noticeable in normal room. Yes, there are cheaper options with similar performance, but Noctua's reputation for reliability won me over. And so far, I don't regret my decision. The machine is really quiet and the temperatures haven't been a problem either. 
I guess we have to look again in summer with more vacation deployed and hotter surroundings. But so far, everything works like a charm. Plus, their support for future socket compatibility means this cooler might outlive the current build. The ASOS ProArt X670E Creator motherboard is the foundation of this build and it's packed with features that make it perfect for my use case. Let's break it down. First, it supports the new 48GB RAM modules, letting me push up to 196GB of memory. For running multiple VMs and AI models, this is crucial. I paired it with Corsair Vengeance RAM running at 5200MHz. Not the fastest available, I know, but solid balance of speed and stability, especially when using all four DIMM slots. The ability to run this much RAM is essential when you're running multiple AI models simultaneously. The motherboard's PCIe configuration is crucial for our multi-GPU setup. When fully populated, we get two PCIe by 8 slots and one by 2 slot. Now, while this might sound like a limitation, remember that AI inference, PCI bandwidth isn't as crucial as you might think. Loading models is bandwidth intensive, yes, but once they are loaded, the actual inference operations don't saturate even a PCI 3.0 by 8 slot. One feature I particularly love in this build is the 10 gigabit Ethernet networking. Having this on board means we don't waste the precious PCIe slot on a networking card. The board also includes a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port for redundancy or management traffic. This dual networking setup is perfect for separating VM traffic from management operations or for setting up storage network segregation. A neat additional feature is the USB 4 port with DisplayPort capability. This lets you route your GPU output through the motherboard to a Thunderbolt display. A small detail that makes a big difference in daily use, especially when you do happen to have a Thunderbolt only display like me. Of course, the motherboard has a lot of more features like Wi-Fi 6E and 4 NVMe slots instead of the usual 2, but these are lesser relevant features to me and the intended build. With the new chipset out and an updated version of the motherboard available, I think I would go with the new ProArt X870E Creator Wi-Fi when starting all over. Just because of the higher supported clock speeds of the RAM and the additional two lanes in the third PCIe slot. Here's where things get interesting. I'm using a two drive approach that might seem unusual at first. A four terabyte Samsung 990 Pro NVMe for VMs and models and an Optane P1600X 118 gigabyte as my Proxmox boot drive. Especially the Optane choice might raise some eyebrows. It's only 118GB and uses PCIe 3.0. But hear me out. The drive offers incredible random read-write performance that even PCIe 5.0 SSDs can't match. We're talking about handling thousands of small system files, logs and VM operations without breaking a sweat. Plus, obtained drives don't degrade over time, like NAND SSDs. They are basically immortal in terms of write endurance. Yes, the price per gigabyte is high. I paid 70 euros for my drive, and sequential speeds aren't breaking any records. But for a hypervisor boot drive, it's perfect. The Samsung 990 Pro, on the other hand, handles the heavy lifting of storing VMs, models, and large files where sequential performance matters more. Now, with all the peripherals in place, we are coming to the main course of the meal, if you will. The GPU selection. Yes, you have guessed it, I went for more than one GPU. As outlined in the beginning, I am trying to build a machine that could fit large language models with as little quantization as possible. The maximum of 24GB of RAM for consumer graphics cards is pretty limiting or simply consuming the entire memory for just one model. This makes agentic workflows rather slow. I mean, just imagine, you have to load and unload huge models whenever a new agent gets a job assigned. Possible? Yeah, sure. But certainly not ideal. To be frank, if you don't have the budget for more than one GPU and you only want to learn, don't worry. This is not a deal breaker. It really just isn't ideal. Okay, 
So with that established, what options do we have? For the main card, there are only two options in my opinion. The RDX 4090 and the 3090 with their respective 24GB of RAM. I chose the 3090 because of the price and availability. With about 700 euros used, I got one pretty cheap. More than half the price of any available 4090. Also, when you look at the mere inference performance reported by other YouTubers, the 4090 only has a tiny edge over the 3090, not a double the price edge. With a size of a bit more than two slots for the 3090, I could still use two slots plus one slot for other cards. Now, that's when it becomes difficult. Another 3090 would be great, but I would also lose the ability to populate the third PCIe slot. The 3090 is just a little bit too big and the turbo cards are notoriously not available. Otherwise, that would be a great option. So, whatever card is there with at least an Ampere GPU, has 24GB of RAM and is in my affordable price bracket of roughly 1000 euro. You might be surprised, but I snatched a deal of a used RTX A5000. In case you didn't know, these are workstation cards. They consume less power, but could operate 24-7, pretty much full load without breaking a sweat. The GPU design is also great for keeping the chassis cold by pushing the air out and uh, it's pretty similar to the turbo card design if you will. The last remaining slot is populated with an RTX A4000. This card has only 60GB of RAM but is based on the same architecture and only consumes 140 watt. For many use cases this is great and because it's a workstation card like the A5000 it could run forever and has great thermals. Price-wise, this card cost me roughly 600 euros used. Not cheap, but there are not a lot of options you could choose from with just like one slot. So, with my entire rig, I get a combined 64GB VRAM in my GPUs, 24,832 CUDA cores and 776 tensor cores with over half a petaflop theoretical tensor core performance and 720 watt max power consumption. I know, this is just theoretical and all, but just to put this into perspective, with an A6000 you get 48 gigabyte of VRAM and 300 teraflops performance with 300 watt of power for about 4300 euros used, if you get it cheap, compared to my 3400 euros combined. I'm not saying my system is better in real world examples, we have to see, but the bang for the buck doesn't seem to be so bad either. I don't have an A6000 to compare a system to, but as far as I've seen performance comparisons, I don't have to hide. But feel free to check out my next video where I'll go deeper into the performance details of the system, so you could decide for yourself if this is something in fact good or not. For everyone who doesn't want to splurge on 64GB and is fine with 48, two RDX 3090s are hard to beat when it comes to performance versus price ratio. Also, when you manage to get two identical SLI enabled ones, you could use NVLink connections to speed up the RAM access between the cards. I heard mixed results about the performance, but yet again, even without that speed boost, this is an insanely great value system. I guess with great power comes great power consumption. Adding up components, we are looking at a theoretical maximum draw of about 1200 watt. The upcoming RDX 1590 is rumored to push 600 watt alone. So I went with the Corsair HX1500i PSU. It's probably overkill, but the 80 plus platinum efficiency helps offset the extra capacity and the fully modular design made cable management much cleaner. Also, you don't want to cheap out on your PSU to wreak havoc on your components if it fails or worse sets them on fire. In practice, the system typically draws between 400 to 800 watt of the ball um, during normal operation, depending on the active workloads, of course. For the case, I kept it simple with the NZXT H7 Flow. It's affordable, spacious enough for free GPUs and provides excellent airflow. While there are fancy options out there, the case does everything I need without unnecessary frills. 
The front mesh panel and three 140 millimeter Be Quiet fans provide additional airflow while being basically silent, which is crucial with multiple GPUs generating heat. Okay, now you have it. My multi-GPU AI home lab virtualization beast, Cerebro as I call it. It might not be the ideal fit for you, but I find it perfect for what I want to do with it. And since I am using it, it serves me very well. Granted, it's not cheap. I'm not using it to its full potential yet, but I'm still slowly growing my knowledge in this realm and it provides plenty of room to grow. In future videos, I give you an insight into the stuff I'm running on that machine and performance analysis for the various graphics cards and their combinatorial performance for inference. Are they really living up to my expectations? Drop a like if you found this helpful and feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. I'm particularly interested in hearing about your own home lab AI setups and what you do differently. Take care and salute. <laughs>